Hello everybody, in this uh, lecture we're going to discuss uh, the AVR hardware connection in uh, this series of lecture we are targeting the Atmega 328 which we can find in Arduino Uno microcontrollers so what do we need to connect for this microcontroller for it to be operational in a real life project this is the main question here so first I need to uh, just check the input output uh, pins of the Atmega 328. So first it has 28 pins. Okay, And if we take a look we can see that it only has 4 or 3 ports which are B, C and D. Okay, D is here, B and D also are interchanging here, C and the rest of B. So this is where you connect your sensors, your push buttons, your LEDs and so forth. Also it, each pin has second functionality. For example, this has ADC and some uh, also some uh, uh, other inputs such as uh, I2C. And then we have uh, also here some uh, serial ports, some interrupt ports and also we have uh, an analog channels here. So uh, what we need to uh, look at is that how do con how do we connect this microcontroller to a real life project so first we need to focus on vcc and the ground this is what will power our microcontroller we have also the reset button which is actually uh, the the pin that if you drive it low as you notice here the reset is active low so when you have a zero here this will reset and of course we have our oscillator the clock that we are driving this microcontroller and uh, these are the three or the four most important pins that we need to get our microcontroller up and running so of course if we have a microcontroller like this we need to connect this to say 5 volts this is also need to go to ground but what about the reset and uh, the, uh, the oscillator so first we need a button like mechanism so that we don't want to reset uh, based on uh, a, a wire we need a switch or a push button for it to operate so before going into how do we connect an active low push button to the reset, let's discuss push, uh, push buttons and switches. So although they have different mechanisms, but let's assume for simplicity that they work the same. So first we have two types, we have active low and active high. So with active low, when we have a zero, this means switch on. When we have a one, this means switch off. No effect. On the other hand, when we have a one, this means switch on. When we have a zero, this means switch off. So how do we drive the active low mechanism of a push button? So first, we need to connect it via resistor to a 5 volt and then to the pin in question that you want to connect it to. And then we do something like this. We have the switch here and we connect it to ground. In this case, the pin is, is by default getting 5 volts. So here we have by default, default 5 volts. So for active low component this should not matter for so the switch is off. Now when we close this, that uh, that uh, switch so here, here switch open and here switch closed. So when the switch is closed, so we have 
a direct uh, path through the through the ground and we know that voltage will drop to zero because there is no resistor here so it favors the path of least resistance and here we have zero volts so when we close the switch the uh, voltage drops directly to zero and for the active high it's a different scenario where we have the switch up there and this is the pin in question and we have the resistors down there and by default it's equal to zero volt this is switch off then when we turn the switch this happens so it becomes like this and here we will have 5 volts so now the switch is on so of course since we have a bar on the reset this means we need to connect these types of switches to our reset component now what about the oscillator so the oscillator is a different story so the oscillator is connected through two pins so this oscillator is uh, pin 9 and 10 and this, this is the crystal 1 crystal 2 so with the crystal 1 and the crystal 2 if we this is 9 this is 10 so if we take a look at the data sheet we notice that we need some capacitors to filter the effects of the vibration from the oscillator because uh, it has some uh, uh, vibrational parts and we need to actually filter them out so we place so we say this is the oscillator and then we place two capacitors here and we connect them to the ground these capacitors are from can be ranged from 18 to 22 picofarads and the same thing here so now we have a connection to the oscillator we need to uh, this is will drive the frequency of our uh, microcontroller so now the three components now can be all fit in in the same microcontroller so if I want to do the full connection it's gonna look something like this so of course here we have reset bar this is at pin 1 so as we said this is an active local connection so notice here how we have 5 volt and of course the switch we have also the VCC and the ground that we need to connect to so notice this is pin 7 for VCC this is pin 7 VCC the ground will be also to uh, pin 8 okay this is ground and remember remember all ground and VCC are connected together so that we can have common ground and common uh, supply voltage at 9 and 10 of course we have the oscillator and we have the capacitors here we have 22 picofarads so this is the basic connection for the 3 to, uh, 3 to 8 microcontroller to uh, to work so when we close when we do a reset on reset what will happen so certain registers will be initialized and I'm gonna uh, list them so these registers are so we have the PC will be B0 we have R0 to R31 all zeros DDRX that's, a, that's the uh, option for configuring the inputs uh, and outputs of the pin for safety also they are all zeros making them all inputs and port X all the ports also are 
driven to zero so that we don't damage any hardware now let's say I want to connect some push buttons and some LEDs to my microcontroller and I want to actually do a, a, real, a real implementation where I can turn on a LED based on a push button so first I need to check out the different LED uh, configurations so of course with LEDs as with push, push buttons we have two configurations we have active high and active low LEDs and those LEDs are just those uh, small lights that you actually uh, when you give them 5 volts or 0 volts based on uh, what they are uh, you can actually turn them on and you have some lights so the active high is actually called forward bias and it has the following characteristics so this is the symbol of a diode of a LED and this is the anode this is the cathode and here we have a the 5 volt and here should be 0 volt for this to light so in order to light to light this we give the anode should be given 5 volts of course with a closed circuit for 0 volts and then for the active low which is called reverse bias we have Okay, the same uh, terminology and you have here 0 volt for it to turn and this is the 5 volt and this is also the anode and this is the cathode okay so to light of course the anode should be 0 volt this will not work without we uh, without adding a resistor to protect to protect the, the LEDs so now if I want to connect some LED, if I want to have a active high uh, LED, I do something like this. This is an active high LED. And of course for an active low, I have here, well, 5 volt this is active low so here when I do a, z a 5 volt it will light and here I have 0 volt this will light also okay so depending on the type of LED you have you you have these two uh, different configurations so uh, let's uh, let's do a small uh, uh, problem so uh, we say assume uh, you have a switch on PB5 and a LED on PD3. Switch is active low and the LED is active high so the first question draw the complete schematic of your design and two write the code so of course uh, to draw the schematics we need the actual uh, location for the uh, for the each pin and this can be done or can be seen by the data sheet when you have this with us so first to do the complete layout I need to have the reset here at pin 1 so as I said this is active low okay so we have. and then we have of course the VCC we have the ground this is one this is as I remember there were seven and eight then for 
9 and 10 we have the oscillator with the 22 picofarads now my switch is on PB5 so I want to check where PB5 is PB5 is actually pin 19 so let's work on this is pin 19 let's say so we have also a active loss switch and we have an active low led at pd3 so where is pd3 pd3 is at pin 5 oh it's tricky so this is pin 5 so what we have here is a resistor then oh, we can we can put the resistor before or after it does not matter okay so now this is the schematic of our design we have the reset the VCC the ground these are all standards and uh, oscillator this is PB5 and this is PD3 so the first thing we need to do is set up our uh, ports when we write the code so this is part one part two is okay we say we want to have port B as an input so we need to clear DDRB we need to set DDRD since we want this as an output so now we have everything everything uh, set for uh, the ports now what we need to do is start testing so we need to test in a loop so that's always be uh, is doing this so we need to test for what in this case since this push button is an active low we need to test that if it's actually on when it's on this means it is clear so in this case I'm gonna say SBIC clear because this is an active low if it's, this is an active high this will become SBIS because I'm testing for one here I'm testing for zero and pin B comma 5 so in this case what I have is pin B comma 5 so if this is true this means it's on otherwise it's off so jump next so if it's on what do I need to do I need to turn off the LED to turn off the LED I need to place 5 volts since it's an active high if this is an active low I would have placed uh, cleared it but in this case I need to set it so in SPI port D comma 3 and in this case I'm, I'm happy it should be light and I go do it again jump loop so otherwise this is next I turn off the LED and do this all over again so in this case this is let's put it in different color so this is LED on this is LED off so this is switch on and here switch off so the whole problem would change based on uh, if the switch is active low or active high it's very simple if we have an active high switch this would be SBIS okay and if we had a active low LED instead of SBI when it's on we need to replace a CBI and to turn it off we do an SBI and this concludes this lecture about uh, how to connect your microcontroller to LEDs and push buttons and what's the difference between active high push buttons and active low push buttons and LEDs.